Hello and welcome to this review of my IBM Model M keyboard. I bought it a while ago, brand new, off of some prize money that I had won, and I want to share some of my experiences with it. This keyboard, despite its age, is still very popular, um, and it's been hailed as the mother of all keyboards and many other highly praising things. It's uh, said to be practically without flaw, and I wanted to nuance that a little bit without trying to uh, offend any of the hardcore Model M lovers out there. Um, let's start with the beginning. So here's a model sticker. It's part number 1370477, um, and it's made by Lexmark in 1995. Now that makes this kind of an intermediate age keyboard. It has a few good things and it has a few bad things. Um, this particular one doesn't have the two part detachable keycaps. It ha only has one part keycaps, but it does have a detachable cable, as you can see there, and it has the fluid draining channels that channel uh, whatever liquids you spill into the keyboard away. So that's pretty good. It's also got the speaker grill, though there's nothing behind it. And these are the flip-out feet. They're very uh, typical for modern M Model M's. And they're very stiff. It takes a huge effort to flip them back in. Christ. Okay, you can see. Um, the feet are also a little bit slippery. I'll show you that now. Um, I guess it's because they're so small. They don't actually have that much purchase on slippery... Um, slippery underglands like this and can very easily move this around um, despite the keyboard's huge weight and that brings me to another bit um, the weight or rather the uh, the construction now this keyboard is very heavy and very sturdy in fact it's pretty much proverbially sturdy um, I'll show you just by knocking on it It's, it <laughs> feels like a brick, and it's very heavy. If I try to lever it from one end with just one hand, it's actually really, really hard. I'm actually quite straining right now. Uh, I don't know the exact weight, but I think it's around three kilos or something, or um, six pounds, I guess, if, uh, if you prefer the imperial system. Um, despite that, despite this uh, proverbial strength, it does have a bit of an Achilles heel. Um, namely on the insides. You don't always hear about this, but um, this is important to know. So the keyboard it consists of a motherboard with the, the keys put in and the metal back plate, which is part of why the keyboard is so heavy. Unfortunately, the back plate is secured to the, the rest of the keyboard using just plastic rivets, which have been kind of melted and then with the two parts pressed together, and that holds the whole keyboard together. Now, there's a whole bunch of those rivets, but unfortunately, they're plastic, and plastic just tends to corrode after a long time. So what happens is these rivets might snap off, and eventually the spacing between the back plate and the keyboard will be so big that keys will start to lose their tactility and their clickiness, and eventually parts of the keyboard will not function at all. Um, so that is something you should keep in mind because even untouched model M's can suffer from this. It's just plastic rotting away. You don't need to use the keyboard for this to work. Now, next, the keys themselves. I'll show you what it's all about. Let me uh, pry off one of the keys. There you go. Let me switch on the lights so you can see a little bit better. This is what it's all about. See that little spring? That's the well-known buckling spring design. What happens is when you press down, you press down on the spring and it buckles against the side like that. Now, this design is extremely ingenious because it provides everything of the keyboard that you need. It provides the tactility, it provides the clicky sound, and it even provides the return spring force. So pretty much the whole switch is made up of just that spring and the, the hammer underneath. So that's a very, very clever design. Nonetheless, it should be realized that this is a cost-saving measure keyboard, actually. The predecessor 
the Model F, which was twice as expensive, it would have cost about 900 adjusted dollars by now. This keyboard costs only $450, roughly in adjusted dollars. Um, didn't have a hammers over membrane system like this keyboard does. It had capacitive switches. And although these um, membrane switches should last about 25 million key presses per key. The Model F was rated at 100 million key presses or more. So that is something to remember. Also, the Model F that came before this is said to have a lighter and superior typing feel, um, and it didn't have plastic rivets. It just came with screws. So even though people hail this as the mother of all keyboards and the best keyboard ever made, do remember that a Model F is superior in almost every way that you can think of. Nonetheless, despite all that bad news, the typing feel of this keyboard is absolutely amazing. Um, and the sound is fantastic. Let me just give you a demonstration. I mean, just listen to that sound. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And the switches are somewhat stiff at roughly 70 grams, but nonetheless, um, it feels very smooth. It's got quite loud ringing noise as well, if you can hear it. And that brings me to another part. Um, this is probably the loudest keyboard you can get. Like, I can't think of a keyboard off the top of my head that is even louder than the Model M. So if you're in an open office, I don't think your colleagues would really um, thank you for, for taking this keyboard with you. Nonetheless, if you're at home, it is delicious to type on. I could do this all day. <laughs> no, it's, re it's really nice, for sure. I mean, uh, in terms of typing keyboards, there's not a lot of keyboards that will give you a typing feel that's even remotely as good as this. So if you're a heavy typist, then this should be a dream. Next thing I wanted to talk about is the keycaps themselves. Now this is the one part keycap, but something similar would go for the two part keycaps. The keycaps are very, very thick, as you can see and they're made of a material called PBT, which is resistant to uh, being uh, discolored with age. The printing is with um, a dye sublimed ink, very high standard. It's nice and shiny, as you can see, even still after all those years. Um, so the keycaps are pretty much the best I've ever seen. The um, alt key and the system request key have uh, colored legends, interestingly, green. Um, and pretty much everything about the construction of the keys themselves is, is very high quality. The one thing I didn't really like, and I might be able to see if I tilt the camera, you can see that there's little molding marks on them. Now they're from the far side of the keyboard, so you can't normally see this. Normally it just looks like that, but it's just a tiny imperfection. Oh. Another way you can detect that the keycaps are very thick and very sturdy is by just rubbing your fingers over the keyboard. And in the case of the Model M, it makes barely any noise comparatively. It's honestly much, much less loud than you would have on other keyboards. So the keycaps are just so thick and heavy that they don't uh, vibrate too much when you do that. Um, all in all, despite this being uh, a cost-saving keyboard for IBM to make. This is made to just about the highest standards that were commercially viable at the time. Uh, the Model F was so expensive to make that it really wouldn't have made them any money to produce it. Um, and this keyboard's just great to type on. Um, it will last you very, very long. The only thing that can really kill it is when those plastic rivets come off. In the case that that happens, you can have them drilled out and replaced by screws. You can do it yourselves, or there's people that do it uh, for you for a cost. Um, but all in all, I would say if you're a typist, you you should love this keyboard. It's it's great to type on. In terms of gaming, it's yeah, it's not that great. Um, it has two key rollover, so you're only guaranteed to have two 
key press is registered at the same time. Some others do it as well, but a lot of combinations around the um, WASD block, like A, A, S, and Q, and S, D, and E, as I recall, they don't really work, or S, D, and C, A, S, and Z. So it's not that great. Um, it's not unusable for gaming, but if you use uh, games where you have to tap a lot very quickly, I would say get something else, get something lighter, preferably, um, because it's just not really what the keyboard was made for. For typing, though, it's amazing. You should definitely give it a go. Anyway, that's the end of my review, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.